Ice fishing can be cold, it can be lonely, and even lonelier when you crash your truck on the side of a country road on the way to ice fishing. And uh, there's no one in sight. No cell service. I'm stuck in a snowbank. And I can't get a hold of my guest who's waiting for me at the bait shop. And I don't know what to do. I don't see any homes. I don't see any people. I'm just seeing things lurking around me that look dangerous and I think I'm in trouble. Go on! Fish on! It seems in every town in America that there's a secret fishing spot where the water runs clear and the bass are always biting. And at that spot, there's an unsung hero who knows every stump, lay down and lily pad. Seems all he's got to do is wet a line. (laughs) And sure enough, he's reeling in a big bass. So if you're looking for real people with real fish stories, then hop a ride. We're going to Lunkerville. So in my quest to find humanity in this barren landscape, the fishing gods presented Bill Buell. And he's a Washington Redskins fan to boot. Things are definitely looking up. Bill had a truck and a chain, and he helped me get back on the road. Your lifesaver. Appreciate it. Yeah. And my iPhone finally got service, so I called Corey, our guest, and he's already at the uh, bait shop with the cameraman. So I said, Corey, go fishing. Start shooting. I'll be there soon because I'm back on the road to Lunkerville. Lunkerville's presented by South Bend, a fishing tradition since 1906. Also sponsored by Diet Mountain Dew. Diet tastes better on the mountain. Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Sunline, the strength to guarantee your confidence. Bass Professor's Fishing Paradise 3D. Download for free in the App Store. Welcome back, folks. Let's see what Mike's up to. I made it. I'm here in Lake George with Corey D. What's your nickname? Do you have a nickname? Everyone has a nickname on Lunkerville. Corey. Corey. Are you Italian? Yeah. My buddy Luke calls me Corky, but... Corey Italian Ice Di Lorenzo. That's what we're calling you, I think. I don't know. We'll see. Ice? <laughs> I like that. Well, this isn't the... It's intri- like Top Gun style. Well, I was thinking Ice Cube, Ice, ice Tea, Man. Crushed Ice. Nah, Italian Ice, I kind of like. <laughs> we're here in Lake George. I'm here late. You just saw what happened. Uh, thanks to Karen and Bill, I got out. And I'm here, and we're fishing with Corey. So have you caught anything yet? We got one perch so far. All right. Let's get the show started. Let's set up a tip-up. Let's do it. All right, I'm clearing away. Where's the all power auger? No, the power auger? Yeah. I don't trust that thing. You just like to work out. That thing is ancient. Okay. I brought it to the shop a few times, and as you can see with all the snow, it's pretty difficult walking. So as heavy as that thing is, I left it in the truck. So we're gonna use a six-inch hand auger, and I'm gonna drill through about 15, 18 inches of ice. Nice sharp blade. It could probably use a new one. It's had a lot of work over the past couple weeks. That was easy. Looks sharp to me. It's because I'm the ice man. You're the ice man. So what we're doing now is just clearing away the slush ice from the hole so we can put our tip up down there. All right, so now we're gonna sound the hole. We're gonna use a a heavy sinker with a spring on it. What I do is I put one point of the treble hook through the spring, and this is gonna get this down to the bottom very quickly. It's gonna tell us exactly where the bottom is because that's where we want our bait, about a foot or two above bottom. So that's where the pike and the perch that we're after today tend to hang out mostly. So I'm gonna drop this down and let it go to the bottom. And when it hits bottom, I'm gonna mark 
where the bottom is with a split shot sinker right on the main ice line. And that way there, if we get a fish, when we go to lower it back down, we know exactly where to set it so we don't have to repeat this process. So I just reach bottom. I usually pull up maybe a foot and a half or so of line, and then I'm gonna crimp my split shot, and that's gonna be my marker. Then we're gonna reel up our line and put a minnow on there and send them back down to the bottom. And what I like to do is take one point of the treble and put it right in front of the back dorsal fin. Just one point like this and have it come out the other side. So you have two other treble hooks exposed like that. And we're gonna send them right down in the hole. Fold over the flag, which is our indicator. So if a fish comes along and hits this, if the fish comes and pulls it like this, it's gonna pop the flag and we know that we have a strike. Now, you, go, you come out on the ice here and it's just this vast sea of snow and ice. Why this spot? It's a bay, you got deep water out here and as you come in the mouth of this bay, we got some weeds that start to grow. Mm -hmm. And Lake George is a clear body of water, so the sun penetrates pretty good. And so the, the weeds grow in that deep water. And we're in about probably 30 to 35 feet, and there is grass on the bottom, and that's what the perch and pike like. So now, is that's this a spot? Is it a spot you would fish in the summer or spring, like a, on a boat? Sure, sure. There's there's good bass population in here mm -hmm. as well. So these fish are in the same area they are all year around? There, there's perch populations in here in the summer as well, yes. Okay, cool. Yep. Flag! Flag! Yeah! What do we do? I'm gonna wait till I feel the fish on. And I'm just gonna give it a yank for a hook set. And you got one? I think we got fish on. Yeah. Not sure, let's see. Oh, you got one. I think we got a perch. Nice. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah! yeah. Sweet glory. All right. Lake George perch. Beautiful. There's obviously a fish here, so I'm saying we should drill two jig holes and see if we can get out of school right in this area. Up here are set in about six feet of water, and we know that because there's two ways to do it. You can either do it with a sounder and drop it to the bottom, but I have an electronic sounder where you drop it in the hole and it'll actually come up with the depth, which is actually four feet here. So, what I'm doing is I'm setting my tip ups just off the bottom because the perch are pretty much from the first three feet of water on the bottom, and what they're doing is they're cruising the area looking for a forage, either little minnows or microscopic invertebrates that live in the grass. So these here I have set right on the weed edge because the weed edge falls around this point and then spreads out into this shallow bay. And this is one big bowl in here that drops off to about 18 feet where our deeper tip ups are, where we're trying to target either bass or trout or pickerel. We haven't had any luck with trout yet, but we did get some pickerel and no bass yet either. But that's the theory behind setting up your tip ups. And depending on the species of fish you fish for, will depend on tippet placement and also bait placement. The perch are primarily on the bottom, so you want to set your baits deeper down, where trout pretty much cruise closer mid-water to under the ice, so you want to set your baits further up. Okay, so I'm gonna reset this tip up and Mike's gonna drill himself a, a jigging hole and hopefully we can get out of the school of these perch. All right. Mine's taking longer. Woo! Come on! You made it look a lot easier, Corey. Ugh. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you're not gonna drill me one too? I can tell you work out, right? <laughs> you're fine. There we go. That's good to go. So we got uh, two jigging setups here. Why this? For perch, this is called a Haley. It's one of my favorite jigging lures for perch. 
Uh, it's kind of a, a metal uh, bait fishing looking thing with a nice shine on it for a flash for an attractor. What I do is I tip the hook with spikes, other people call them maggots. I put like two or three on there. And maybe eight inches or so above this Haley, I have a fly. Because what the perch eat a lot of in this lake is the grass shrimp. And these things kind of mimic that. So I just let it go to the bottom. Again, we're probably in about 30, 35 feet. Um, once I reach bottom, I reel on my slack. I go about one or two turns. So it's just hovering above the bottom in the weeds. And I usually use two or three different um, jigging mechanisms. Just sit there and hold it still, dangle it right in front of them. Uh, or you, you jig it up and let it flutter and that produces the flash and that can attract them. Or sometimes you just hold it still just like this and jiggle very slightly mm -hmm. right in front of them. So any one of the three, but for me, I, f I find 75% of the time or more, um, I know it's boring, but if you just hold it still down there, they'll really? come up and hit it. So it's hit bottom, just a couple reels up, and that's it. Okay. Let it sit for 30 seconds. 30 whole seconds. I'm doing 15. Um, I don't know if I have the patience for this. <laughs> While we're waiting to catch a fish with Corey, let's check out the Lunkerville archives and revisit our first ice fishing adventure in Port Henry, New York. Anybody in there? We came to do some fishing. Oh, here we go. Jigging poles look like they've seen quite a few uh, smelt. I made them when I was in high school, Don't tell but them they've how many. been many, many, many years, and those scales on there are 40 years old, some yeah. of them. Tell a far-fetched story <laughs> if I ever heard <laughs> one. <laughs> you, you, you over -ding. That's what? Over -ding. Tell them the truth. <laughs> well, yeah, they, that's the way they started out. So what's this technique you're using there, Jim? Actually, it's called bob. You just bob them. That's what we call it, bobbing. And then you uh, snap the line trying to steal one or set the hook. Everybody has their own different bob. It's just individual styles. Uh, he's got too big a stroke, you notice? It's too the big, distance, it's too wide. The distance is, is uh, he's, he's got what they call an outdoor stroke. <laughs> which means you need a bigger shanty or go outdoors and fish. Do you notice he didn't catch the go. fish? <laughs> you miss too many strokes, you can't do that. They'll get off when they come up. Okay. There's a lot of different techniques when you ice fish, you know. I mean, a lot of guys, they'll, they'll use one pole, they'll use two poles. You know, they, they, they'll whip that thing around. Some of them just sit there. For me, it's a one-two, one-two, you know. It's, it's not uh, conducting the orchestra or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, because you see that, you know. Yeah.
Additional support for Lunkerville provided by Matsuo America, tried and true lures at a price you can afford. Hurricane Salt Tackle, a force to be reckoned with. Celsius, ice fishing gear for hard water anglers. BassResource.com, the ultimate bass fishing resource guide. All right, Mike, we gave this probably 10 minutes or so. I think we should get mobile and uh, drill a couple more holes and see if we can get out of school. That's it, 10 minutes. Five to 10 minutes wow. a hole until we run into them. We should have brought a, a hole driller, like a production assistant, just to drill the holes for us. Damn, I didn't even think of that. And it helps if you try to go in a straight line. Okay. Oh, I'm close. Ugh. Home stretch. That last bit, there we go. Woo! Now that guy's got it going on with the power auger. I mean, just go around and buzz all the holes. I think I feel some weeds down there. I'm just loading it up with maggots. Can you have too many maggots? There's oh, one. there you go. Oh, we got fish on. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. There you go. It could be a lake trout. Yep. It is a lake trout. Yeah. We got a lake trout. Nice. A little lake trout, probably maybe 18, 19 inches. Yeah. Beautiful. So we'll send them back down. Thanks for being on Lunkerville. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what's he saying? That's uh, that's actually called burping the fish because their swim bladder fills up. Oh, so what so did you do? I just pressed up against his stomach, and that releases the air from the swim bladder and he's able to swim back down and equalize everything. Well, that's very considerate. Yep. Otherwise, he'll just sit there and try to get back down because the swim bladder is so yeah. filled up with air. Yeah. Makes sense. So. Very nice, Corey. All right, buddy. Yeah. All right. How are the tip-ups looking? Oh, here we go. That's good. Yeah. You got one? I got one. Sweet. It doesn't <laughs> feel like much. Yeah, it's a perch. A perch? <laughs> it didn't feel like much at all. There we go. Another one for the pan. All right. Thank you. Nice. Now, can we use this guy again? Or he's probably... Nah, he's no. toast. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh -huh. That's a keeper. I think that's a flag. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. All right. A monster. <laughs> Look at him. He's strong. Woo. That is the lunker. The, the lunker. In the first category. Let's flay a fish. All right. What I usually do is go in behind this, this first fin right here, and I'm going to cut down. This one's a little bit froze. And I get down to the backbone, right by that fin, and that's when I'm going to turn it flat and go right along the backbone just like this until you get down to the tail. I leave a little bit of skin right there, flap this over, and then I'm going to go in between the, the flesh here and the skin and just lay that flat, go right along the skin and you're going to have a nice looking fillet. And you got like all the that. meat. And then one last step is this is your rib cage right here. You need to get rid of that. So the last little move here is go right along this rib cage, just like that. Cut that out, and you have a beautiful bone-free tonight. I, I can eat it right now. I can sushi it. Sashimi. I would eat that. Let me just take a bite. 
Survivor man does it all the time. It's pretty good. You know, Corey, ice fishing gets a bad rap sometimes. I mean, people think it's cold. Why would you go fishing on the ice? But it could be comfortable. It's just like any other fishing where you have to find the fish and catch the fish. And so you have that challenge, you have the tranquility and the comfort. And uh, I had a great time today. Thanks a lot for taking me It was me out. a great time. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show. Tell us how the day went. Well, uh, the day didn't start off so good for you. You were late, but for obvious reasons, you, you were off in a ditch on a wrong turn. Yeah, and I have video footage to prove it. I didn't uh, set my alarm clock late. So the, the cameraman and I met up at the bait shop and uh, we got out here and got set up and we, we caught a fish right away. Um, and you came out a little while later and slowed down. I thought we were gonna get into them because of the fish right away. and. Um, it kind of picked up toward the end, and, and we got into some fish, so at least, at least we got some. Yeah, we got some, you got most of them. I didn't get my jig fish, but I am the king of tip-ups now. And I just had a great time. So glad to come out fishing with you. Thanks again. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And let's go bass fishing in I the spring. I would love to. Cool, man. Anytime. All right, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in next week to Lunkerville.